Hi, welcome to Painting by Letters. My name is Hannes. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about Trazin the Infinite. I've made no secret of the fact that I've wanted this model for quite some time, but what makes this episode, I suppose, hopefully at least a little bit interesting, is the fact that this video really is a documentation of me failing to paint Trazin in a way that I've enjoyed. I really am going to be very clear up front, I hated this process. I enjoyed next to none of it, and I'd like to discuss that. This is a hobby after all, and we should be doing things which are enjoyable to us. So I want to dissect this failure. So my initial plan was quite simple. I was going to use Trazin to relax a little bit. It was going to be a bit of a test of my abilities. I was going to spend a bank holiday weekend, which in the UK is where we get sort of three days, entirely on this one model. And I was going to test the AK interactive texture pastes. I uh, failed on all four counts. So in this video, let's review how it began. Let's talk a little bit about safety and resin. I apologize that that bit's not gonna be very fun, but there's something that I feel like I have to say. We're gonna talk about how not to prime your miniatures. We're gonna talk then about my attempt to salvage something interesting and enjoyable out of this experience. And then at the end, we're going to review and discuss what it was I learned. So to begin, I would like to show you the intro video that I filmed for the video that arguably I didn't make. This video is going to be a bit weird in that it's a bit of a palate cleanser. Don't get me wrong, most of the videos thus far probably have been as I've been sort of fumbling my way through this YouTube thing, trying to work out what I think looks good, what I think doesn't. Still a lot to learn, but you know, we're getting there. And I want to sort of mark a bit of a sea change. Really, when I got going, my process of fixing these Necrons was supposed to be my can I really do this? Like, as a full-time professional with a job that I love, that I'm not going to quit, can I really do this on YouTube? And I found out that I kind of can. I'm typically about a video or two ahead. It's not really absorbing my evenings in the way that I sort of feared that it might. It seems quite reasonable to achieve this during a working week. And in a normal working week, I can seemingly produce two videos. So now I want to stop. And I want to stop and think about what happens next. So really the project of fixing things is arguably over. There's a couple of things that we still need to do. One of the reasons why some units have nice bases and some do not is because I didn't have any texture paste. I'll be honest, I've never used the AK stuff, uh, Sandy Desert Acrylic. I mean, I'll be painting over it anyway, I would suspect, but it doesn't seem to have that many negative reviews, so we'll go with that. But really, the palette cleanser itself, and no prizes for guessing this one, is a trazen. I walked into Games Workshop in the Metro Centre and, and, and asked if they had a version of trazen. And their response was, we don't stock Citadel Finecast for a Warhammer store. That was a weird thing for them to say. This product is so disliked and so not bought that they don't stock it themselves. Yeah. Now, my army doesn't really fit his colour scheme. Um, so in the age old, I don't really care. I'm going to paint him like my army. And some people will be annoyed at that but this channel's small enough they probably won't find it. So that'll be fine. So yeah, we've kind of got 
a start. Something to begin with. Um, next, I want to talk about safety and also the resin that these models are made out of. In my initial cut of this video, I had a section here where I talked at some length about safety. And to be honest with you, I think it's a little bit redundant. We're all adults, we know what we're doing. Really, if I'm honest with myself, the reason I got so upset during filming this video and why I recorded a bit to camera to talk about safety is because I realised I hadn't done it properly. And in that flustered state where I was realising that I hadn't really been safe with resin and that I'd just been cutting it and letting the fibres go everywhere, my thoughts about the AK Interactive Texture Paste went solidly out of the window and instead I was using these cork offcuts to do the basing. There's a lesson in here about planning once you've actually checked your materials out, which I didn't really do this time. Because Trazin doesn't stand very tall, I wanted him to have a bit of a tactical rock, and because his base is really small, then there wasn't any space for texture paste. So yeah, that previous section was pretty redundant. One questions at this juncture why I filmed it. I did say this video would be a bit of an anatomy of a failure, so here you have it. I've entitled this section, How Not To Prime. Between different takes, I'd had a bit of a trouble trying to fit the different elements of the model down onto something that I could use to prime. I've been using these cork tops for little glass containers. I think they're designed for like herbs and spices and things like that, but they weren't particularly good because they let all the moisture out and things used to dry out a bit too quick. So I've sort of co-opted them for hobbying and I used some pins and a couple of other things just to stick the models down. The first pass, to be blunt, is just way too close in places. This really is a model due to its complexity that probably needed a second pass of the black. But rather than doing that, I just decided that I would do two sets of spraying over it. Understandably, this did begin to cloud some of the definition. I should say, in my own defence, the definition on the model wasn't great to begin with, but I really did not help it out. I did this priming on the same day that I'd cut out and initially trimmed the models. I really had safety on the mind. As such, I just filmed this little bit that I'll drop in here. First and foremost, I am wearing my mask and my glasses. Got a door open there, the garage. When I was spraying, both doors were fully open, but I didn't really want you to see the street I live in. I just slightly closed them. So the advice is always to wait about an hour between priming initially and then doing any kind of coating like this. Being the smart person I am, I waited about 10 minutes. I could give you the excuse that, you know, I'd already lost a day and my whole plan to spend an entire three days on this one model was kind of already getting derailed and I was getting a bit stressed about that. But really, there's just no excuse. <laughs> There really isn't. And as predicted, then the lead belcher came out a little bit weirdly. It doesn't show up great on camera when I've reviewed the footage, but it's quite a blotchy cover. I've also used this kind of lead belcher over some Immortals and a couple of other models since filming this. And I have to say it went over perfectly fine when I followed the instructions. Funny that. So now I want to talk about my attempt to salvage. Initially, I was comparing it to my Overlord. I realised the Trazin model's actually quite small. I mean, obviously, it's scale creep, isn't it? It's larger than a warrior, but it's about the same size as an immortal, it seems. At least, the head is at about the same place. So, compared to sort of the modern sculpts that we get in Indomitus and stuff like that, it is actually quite small. At this moment, I had a bit of a revelation. I'd built this model up in my head as this test of what I could do and pushing my skills and maybe to demonstrate to myself that if I put the time in, I might be able to demo some of the skills that I see other people do. I'm not saying that I would be anywhere near as good as people, but I could at least show myself getting better. That was what I wanted. At this juncture, my revelation essentially was there wasn't much point. It doesn't show up great on camera, but a lot of the detail had gone in a few areas. And so things that I would naturally rely upon to help myself do certain higher skills was really gone. As such, I decided to have some fun. And that's really what we're documenting from here. So initially, I went over in some Black Legion contrast paint just to pick out that cape. 
to sort of give it a bit of a darker color. I thought maybe having quite a dark color down the back would work. I'll be honest, this paint went on much, much thicker than I was expecting and really stained it quite dark but that became then a challenge that I had to overcome. Whenever I'm painting Necrons or the metal, after the metal has initially been painted, I always go over with some Agarax Earthshade. I really like that kind of brown, oily-ish look, and I think that renders really nicely in a final effect. I then painted his shoulders to match the rest of my army. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you guys will already know the steps to this, but if not, it's three different greens. I'll use one as a base coat, which is the darkest. I then glaze over a slightly lighter, but also slightly more washed out paint, the edges, just to give a bit of visual interest. And then I highlight in quite a punchy and sort of yellowy green over the top. I thought, despite the fact that I might not be able to use this model for what I initially intended, I could at least have a practice at some of those higher level skills. So I picked out a silver, it's just the Vallejo silver one, and attempted to pick up some raised metallic edges, things like that, just as a bit of a highlighting practice. I actually can't recommend enough picking a model that you do not care about and having some highlighting practice. I learned a few things about the way that I hold my hands that despite the fact I've been doing this quite a lot, I just didn't really realize. So I would recommend it. I also picked out the gold details just to bring a bit of warmth into the model, that kind of thing. So my plan with that black cape, because it worked on the little scholar for my little mascots, was to use the dark purple contrast on the cape. This didn't really work, it didn't stain it in the way that I wanted. It just sort of gave the admittedly very dark colour a bit of a purplish twang. Not really what I was after. I really don't know what to call this bit. Is it a loincloth or something? <laughs> um, feels a bit weird, Trazen having a loincloth, but never mind. I painted his loincloth just in the blue contrast. I was quite happy if this pulled, just I wanted it to sort of seep into the darker recesses a little bit. I used that pink contrast I really enjoyed from the mascots video and just used a little bit of that here and there just to sort of warm up the golds. Next, I just base coated the blade. The way that I typically paint Necron weapons is actually, basically I wet blend on the weapon itself. But to do so, I often find it works best if you've got a really solid red underneath. So I was just putting that red in. I just keep applying coats until it's a matte color and it seems to work quite well. I picked out a pink and a purple, mix them together and use that as a dry brush to brighten up the cape. I'm really glad I practiced with this actually, weirdly, because those very, very dark purple recesses, although they were initially a mistake, end up a really nice counterpoint to what is quite a washed out, but still quite bright purpley colour. I'd love to say at this point that this was because I looked at a colour wheel or something, but it absolutely is not. I just wanted to practice with another colour on top and see what I could end up with. I actually have a very limited range of purples, but despite that I really enjoyed this process. My plan had been, initially, that I was actually going to sit there and highlight lots of the scales on that cape, but at this juncture I decided against that and the dry brush quite nicely handled that entire job itself. Then I just blended the weapons together. My process for this is quite simple and I'm actually going to discuss this a little bit in the next video that involves Necrons. Essentially it's just taking a red, an orange and a yellow and then mixing a mid-tone between red and orange and then between orange and yellow and then using those five colours slowly but surely, so starting in the middle with the darker colours and slowly building out towards the edges in the lighter colour. I'm not actually the biggest fan of that non-metallic metal green white highlight style that's quite common with Necron weapons. And I find that this blend works quite well because you can simplify it just to those three colors. For example, for like Necron Warriors or something like that. But you can use the more complex five paints whenever you're doing something blending like this where you're wanting to give some visual interest to your models. Next I did the stone on the base, really really simple, black, dark grey, light grey, all dry brushing, done. 
I did the blue on the chest plate, that was just because I test fitted the model and then very quickly realised that I'd missed it. So I just painted that over. And then at the same time, I also looked at the red ground colour. I don't really have a head cannon for it or something, but I've often sort of thought that if Necrons were living under a planet for millions upon millions of years, surely some of the metallics must have risen to the top. So for some reason that must be iron, at least in my brain, so it goes red. Like with my other Necrons, I just used a bit of contrast stain over that blue. I applied way, way too much here. But never mind, these things happen. You live and you learn. I did some light blue highlights on the chest as well. Again, this is my chance to have a little bit of fun and practice. And normally when I'm painting models, I'm absolutely terrified of highlighting. But because at this point I did not give a shit, it just became a really enjoyable meditative experience. And I actually really enjoyed it. Most of these highlights didn't survive. I took most of them back off again because, you know, I'd missed something or I'd clipped something. But I really, really enjoyed it. And then at this juncture I glued him together and got him on his base. So to close this video, I want to review, but I also want to discuss what I learned. This model is, conversely, the project I've hated the most and enjoyed the most since starting this little YouTube channel to just document me working through my back catalogue. Please ignore the fact that I bought a new model for this video, please and thank you. I really disliked the start of it, working with the resin in particular really wasn't enjoyable. But that process of just being cut loose, of not having to really worry about anything, to not having to think about anything, and just enjoy how it ends up, really presented something that I could properly get my teeth into. So here's my recommendation for the room. At some juncture, pick a model up something you don't care about and just paint it up anyway. And I had to spend 18 pounds and absolutely ruin some primer to learn that that was quite an enjoyable thing to do. So I would really recommend it. Get a hold of a model you don't care about or just something off eBay, strip it and just have a go and a bit of a play and see what works. Even though I was painting towards my normal scheme, I was playing around with how things were blended, what I was highlighting, things like that. And I really enjoyed it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This has been Painting by Letters. My name is Hannes, and keep safe out there.